and gentlemen, and welcome to an episode of First 15 here on Pastiche of Skin. Today we're checking out a game called Militant. Yeah, I got access to the demo of this a couple of weeks ago. It's available on both the European and on the American PSN networks, but yeah, it's been a busy week, so I haven't been able to really kind of sit down and record this dialogue over the top of the gameplay I got on the original look at the game. So here's our opportunity to really take a look, so enjoy! Militant is a side-scrolling shoot-em-up in the same vein as, say, Contra or maybe even a platformer like Rayman, where you're pretty much playing as the characters from A Bug's Life or Ants. That encapsulated the whole thing. But I, what I should do is let the intro speak for itself, so take it away, game. Crystallite, the base of any economy in the insect kingdom. The resources are in permanent dispute. Who commands this precious element will control the rest. Among the most powerful, tensions run high. The ants, with an experienced and well-trained army, and the termites, whose principal strength abides in their great number of soldiers. Outside of this conflict, civil war consumes the empire of the wasps, a revolution fomented by the termites and condemned by the kingdom of the ants. It's merely a matter of time before the scorpions, experts in arms manufacture, and the beetles, criticized for being mere peons of the termite empire, take part in these events that will put to test the strength and ability of the nations. A war that all seek, a war that all are anxious to begin. Awkward long silence. Let's move on. So yeah, whenever you start in the game, basic enough. Left, right, basic controls. The, it feels like a standard Contra style shooter with a lock-on mechanic for shooting enemies that are in the background and foreground as you move around. You also have the ability to dash and also the ability to melee which can save you a lot of bother considering the fact that some of these weapons that you use are in fact uh, they, they over once they overheat then you're completely defenseless but you can with a well-timed strike send back an enemy shot against them using the melee so you're never really completely without weapons but it can get a little bit uh, testy with the amount of stuff that's going on one of the things I didn't realize in the first playthrough of the game whenever I was working my way through the uh, opening levels of the demo was that you could switch between weapons. You have a rapid fire rifle, you have a crossbow S kind of um, uh, cut through shot which actually goes through multiple enemies and you have your ordinary kind of charge pistol. Now if you're not switching between these regularly or kind of pay attention to the quick tips instructions you're, it would immediately find bosses like this mini boss halfway through the level really difficult. Now fighting against this boss it reminds me a lot of something that would actually appear in say a Mega Man X game where you kind of walk into a room and then you're trapped in the room against said boss until you can move on and there's of course a regular pattern to memorize. Some of them a little bit more bullet heavy than others but most of the time you can actually dodge around and uh, focus on the pattern of the enemy and know when to actually attack. Part and parcel of this, whenever you're trying to make use of the movement and lock-on mechanics at the same time, I found that the the lock-on will fail and you may be wasting bullets, which in conjunction with the overheating of the weapons can really mess up your timing and your day. So getting your coordination down between movement, dashing, lock-on and firing can be a little bit tricky and something I think needs a little bit of refining or tightening so that you either have to really stop moving and lock on or the lock on is a lot faster to find the opponent you're fighting on especially whenever you're fighting against these boss enemies because you're only really pointing at one target at any one time so yeah that's how I'm going to take it down so taking a further look into the level the level layouts in the game are pretty they're not unique because they're essentially caverns and dungeons, dungeons and caverns, caverns and more dungeons. Because you're actually playing as an ant in this demo, and I imagine you can play as multiple or different uh, races with the way it laid out the five or six races at the beginning of the game, that you can, uh, you'll see a variety of locations, not just always underground. With it being underground, it makes, it, it has this kind of like aesthetic of being really dirty and grimy and tunnel based which 
it would get boring to me after a time. Kind of reminds me a lot of very linear corridors. Some of the things that people found quite uh, irritating about something like Mighty Number no. Nine, which uh, demanded a lot of fast movement and pace, while also restricting you to really kind of like one double jump or two double jumps to spacing for moving around. I don't mind it too much in this game, but it's kind of uh, because the demo doesn't give you that much of a scope for the where you can actually get the play around in. I reserve my judgment on whether or not the level design is worthwhile. It works for this particular level, but I want to see where the variety could actually be in this garden type kind of scale of you know, Honey I Shrunk the Kids, where you, uh, every the normal everyday large objects could actually be a, uh, a proper hazard or a thing that will get in your way. Something that's actually that, um, tangled. Not tangled, is it? Unravel <laughs> it did very, very well. Was kind of making objects of scale seem like much larger and more dangerous things whenever you ran into them. Speaking of level design, the, this demo level that they showed us has a one long corridor that leads up towards its last boss, which seems to have a usage in the combo system where you get the opportunity to refill your health through one chain after another of enemies which is a smart move it's kind of an instead of having just a normal health drop or an ammo drop which kind of signals the beginning of a boss fight it seemed to come out of absolutely nowhere and the bosses in this appear to be huge I mean this, this particular one is a room sized boss and it doesn't seem to be a major like last of the bosses boss this is just a a scale to size creature to creature kind of thing and admittedly they mess with the mess with the biology of the uh, creatures giving them their massive armored units and the ability to attack but if this wasn't meant to be biological i could easily see this as an uh, almost like a pro protector kind of uh, alien creature that's attacking instead of actually being a ant no i made the comment earlier on that's compared to ants or a bug's life much less a bug's life ants kind of has a very similar almost uh, humanistic while real aesthetic to the character designs and they really done it well with the creatures i, I so it, the game interests me for its look alone and i wouldn't mind playing more of this i, I didn't i didn't dislike it but i just found it a, a little bit difficult to get into because of the control system being a, a bit unintuitive or at least being um, not as precise as I wanted it to be whenever I was trying to use the lock-on. The boss patterns are easy enough to figure out from what I could see. Uh, there's nothing that is wrong with this game. I just don't see it as being a top title for me, but I definitely see it as being a, a kid-friendly action-adventure game that could really do well with your uh, with families or with uh, adults that are actually playing with other family members on the same systems. You can still, it, it might be the control system might be a little bit elaborate or too fast paced for a majority of kids, but it's not exactly an orgy of violence. It's a child friendly action adventure game. I want to know more about this world that they have, even though the narration was a little bit dodgy. It feels like maybe that demo was actually placeholder because even with it being the way it was, it had that very long pause at the very end of it, as if the timing was a little bit off. I'd be curious to know a little bit more about the developers of this game to see if they are, they're non, I mean, this, the main team itself isn't uh, English in first language, so that this was actually a translation from their project. It, it just has that feeling to me. I don't mean to offend by saying anything otherwise, but it has that feeling that it, English wasn't their first language and that it was just a matter of translation error and timings. Now you can see that there's a menu screen, there's actually upgrades and viable choices. There's a differing style from level to level. The platforming is a little bit more intense. The action continues to get bigger. There's death traps, there's battle scenes. There is flying shooting levels reminding me very much of things like Area 88. There's a lot in this game and I, 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 it kind of feels like an old school action shooter platformer that kind of takes levels of flying with levels of platforming with levels of shooting. It's it's an old school game with a modern look. So I, I'd recommend it. I recommend that you actually give it a wee try out, at least in the demo. If you get a feel for the controls and you like the, lo like the look of it, you'll get a lot of distance out of this. Uh, 
that's all I've got to say. So thank you very much for watching. This has been Darren for Pastiche of Skin. Remember, if you like this video, you can hit the like button. If you didn't, there's a dislike button nearby. And remember to comment and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more stuff from First 15 or of my other shows made in Japan. This is Pastiche of Life signing off, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.